how Paul Ryan reacted to today's big sit-down. I was very encouraged with what I heard from Donald Trump today. I do believe uh, that, that we are now planting the seeds to get ourselves unified, to bridge the gaps and differences. And so from here, we're going to go deeper into the policy areas to see where that common ground is and how we can make sure that we are operating off these same core principles. I think this is going in a positive direction, and I think this is a first very encouraging meeting. But again, in 45 minutes, you don't litigate all of the processes and all the issues and the principles that we, um, that we are talking about. Here with Reaction 2016, presumptive, well, he will be the Republican nominee. Donald Trump is with us. Mr. Trump, good to see you. Hi, Sean. How, how, your take on the meeting, what do you think? I thought it was a great meeting. We had a, uh, we discussed a lot of things, a lot of very important things, and I thought it was really a very, very good meeting. I think Paul felt the same way and everybody else did also. Yeah. You know, I, maybe it's just me, there's a part of me that thinks, I understand that people saying, you're the nominee, you have the job to unite the party, but doesn't he as the Speaker of the House also have that job? Well, I think he does, and I think he's doing a good job. He's got not an easy job, and I, I don't mind going through a little bit of a slow process. It's a very big subject. I mean, we have a lot of things, and uh, I think for the most part we agree on a lot of different items, and uh, we're getting there. I feel very strongly about border security. I feel very strongly about trade. I feel very strongly about building up the military, and, you know, to a large extent, I think Paul is there also, so yeah. we'll get there, I'm right, pretty so, sure. Uh, but I, I've interviewed you a lot in this process. You say you want conservative justices to the Supreme Court. You said you'll even right. give us a pool of names before the election, right? Right, I'm going to do that, yes. Right. All right, so you're going to build a wall. That's conservative. Conservative justices obviously are. You've said to me repeatedly you want to get our budget back in balance, uh, that you will repeal and replace Obamacare, right, with, likely with health care right. savings accounts. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Common Core, we're going to get rid of Common Core, bring education locally. We're going to do that. We're going to protect our Second Amendment, so important, so, so important. And, you know, the Second Amendment is being chipped away at. And as far as Hillary's concerned, she wants to abolish the Second Amendment. I really believe she wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Her whole view on guns, are, she's a disaster in so many different ways. So we're going to, I think we really had a great meeting today, and I think we agree on a lot of things, and it'll be a little process, but mm -hmm. it'll come along, pretty sure. You know, and then you, got, you, you want to be energy independent. You said you want to take care of vets. Right. You want to build up the military. Maybe it's me, and maybe I'm a little cynical here. What, what does he want to know? That... Why is this so hard for him to say, yeah, I agree with him on all of those issues right there, and Hillary Clinton is on the other side? I don't understand why that's so hard. Well, I think a big thing today was the judges, you know, the justices, Supreme Court, and I think that uh, they felt very good about it. I had this idea a couple of months ago because I was getting a little bit of pushback from some great people and some great friends of mine that are in Congress, and they were telling me that, uh, you know, how can we feel a little bit better? And I came up with this idea that I would come up with a list of really, really terrific, acceptable judges, conservative, and I'll put that list forward, and that'll be a list from which I'll choose, or at least a list, at a minimum, a list from which I'll sort of use as a guide. And I'll tell you, that went a long way. I, people really like that idea a lot. You know, I think a lot of people do, and I, I've even heard people talk about maybe even naming some cabinet positions. I mean, you've got a team of people. You've got Ben Carson working for you now. Chris Christie's working for you yeah. now. Um, would you maybe name some of those people along with vice president before the election? I do think so. I think before the election, I'd name some, and I think they'd be really great. We have some great names. You just mentioned two of them, but we have some other great names, and uh, they want to be involved. They would love to be involved. And, you know, I get a kick. All of these people that are saying they really don't want to be uh, understood. They don't want to be for the vice president uh, position, and but none of those people were asked. I mean, it's like one of those things. You know, they're all turning me down, but they were never asked. And I guess <laughs> they turn me down because they know they're not going to be asked. But uh, I, we have some incredible people for vice president that I think you'll be very impressed with, and I'll do that announcement probably during the convention in Cleveland. Let's talk. There was a report this week. You narrowed it down to five or six people. Is that true? Yeah, I would say that's true. That's true. Okay. And you're going to give me an exclusive news-breaking hint right here. Anything you can tell us about that? Well, I can tell you you'll like most of them. I'm not sure about all of them, but you'll like most of them. But I think the end result is you'll like the final pick, which is the only one that counts. And 
you know, we're going to have some uh, interesting days and nights ahead because it's really tough. I mean, it's a tough decision. You have some that are really, really strong in some areas. We want to get somebody that's really good in all areas. And I think we have a few that are really excellent and that people are going to like and really respect as people. Let's talk about some issues came up this week about, in the last week and a half, some ambiguity on issues of minimum wage, raising taxes, whether or not you are softening your stance about bringing refugees into the country. So let's clarify minimum wage. Okay, well, let me just tell you the only thing I am talking about a little bit is I want, I like the idea of the states looking at minimum wage because. If they don't, you know, New York is totally different than if you go to Alabama, Arkansas, so many places that I love. They voted for me. I love them all. And, but you're talking about a whole different, you know, cost of living. So what's good for New York is not necessarily good for someplace else. New York is very expensive to live in. And I could see having more in New York and less in other places. And yet your standard of living might be better in Alabama or, as I said, Arkansas and other places than it would be in New York, even though New York would have a higher minimum wage. So I really like giving it to states to determine. Plus, they have to compete with each other among, you know, other mm -hmm. things, but they have to compete with each other. So I like the concept of giving it to states. And in some states where it's more expensive, maybe they do have to lift the minimum wage. And in others, they won't have to do it. And those people live very well. So that's the way it is. Now, they also have to compete with each other in business. So I really like the idea because it's so different. You know, it's a big country. It's so different, and the cost of living is so different. I like letting the states set the minimum wage. How about tax increases? I saw that you, you, you had said, well, maybe we'll raise taxes on the wealthy. You clarified it on yeah. Twitter. I, I didn't clarify, John. Look, these people on minimum wage, uh, number one, I said about states, and I think it's very clear, and I think it's a good idea. And I've been universally praised for that. As far as taxes are concerned, all I said is I put, you know, when I put in taxes, it's really a proposal. It's not a policy. It's not anything. It's a proposal. So you put in taxes because you're going to have to negotiate with Congress. You're going to have to negotiate with senators, and you're going to have to negotiate with Congress people. And they're going to be, and it's going to be a tough negotiation. I'm going to possibly have to lift it from my proposal, but that proposal, and even when lifted, will be a lot cheaper than it is right now. As you know, Larry Kudlow is in love with my plan, and Larry Kudlow is a fantastic guy. And Larry Kudlow, really, he likes my plan the best. But my plan is the biggest cut of anybody. I have the biggest tax cut of anyone. But remember, when I put in the proposal and proposed rates and everything else, it's going to be negotiated. You're not going to put in and everyone's going to say, oh, that's wonderful. I'm going to leave it right there. So I expect. Now, I will tell you, we're taking care big league of the middle class. We're taking care of business. Our business taxes are being reduced by a magnificent, I mean, by a tremendous sum. And I will say, perhaps from my low proposal, perhaps the wealthy will go a little bit up from that standpoint. But that's all I was saying. They're not going up. So that's not a clarification. That's just all you have to do is read it. And I'll tell you who covered it well. Yesterday, the, the Wall Street Journal had a front page article, covered what I said so well, because the Wall Street Journal writer really got it. He understood it. It was covered so perfectly. Well, listen, you know, when you really think, look at the latest numbers that have come out. This is the scary part. And I asked you a lot when we were on the road together. I'd ask you almost every interview. I mean, you have one in five families that don't have a single family member in the workforce. Look at young people today. Young men, 18 to 34. This is staggering. One in six are either incarcerated or don't have a job. Now, if we don't turn that around, then our country is in decline and irreparably so in many ways. That, that's going to be probably the biggest challenge you have, right? Well, we're losing our businesses. We're losing our manufacturing. You know, I won New York and I won Pennsylvania and Maryland. I won everything. I won every state. You look at Indiana, which was the most recent one. And then uh, the other night, we, we just had a fantastic night also in Nebraska, in West Virginia. You look at what's happened to West Virginia with the miners, where Hillary Clinton says she wants to put the miners and the mines out of business. And I say just the opposite. We're going to put the miners back to work and we're going to open up the mines. It is just insane what's going on. She's like a job killing machine. She is horrible in terms of the economy. Horrible. Don't forget it was her husband who signed NAFTA, which was probably the greatest in terms of a disaster, the greatest disaster we've ever had economically for jobs. Mm -hmm. I went through New York and Pennsylvania and Maryland and Connecticut, all these states. 
it's they're they're like empty. It's, it's the jobs scary. have been sucked out of us. They've moved to Mexico. China's taken our business. We have to get our country back to work. We're not. We don't have any jobs. On, and uh, I can do it. Believe me, that's what I do best. Well, every exit poll shows jobs, the economy, are people's top concern. Obviously, this this president has accumulated more debt than every other president before him combined. L let me ask you another issue. Uh, James Comey, our FBI director, our assistant FBI director, uh, Obama's special envoy to defeat ISIS, General Allen, our director of national intelligence, James Clapper, our our homeland security chairman, have all, Mike McCall, have all said ISIS will infiltrate the refugee population. You took a strong stand. It was reported today that you said, well, that's only a suggestion, a temporary ban. Explain. No, I would not allow people to come in from Syria. They're not vetted properly. They're moving in by the thousands. You remember I told you thousands of people are going to pour in? I turned out to be right. Everyone said I was wrong. I was right. Thousands of people are coming in from Syria. We don't know who they are. If you look at the migration, you have a lot of young, strong men. You look at the women. Where are the women and children? You don't have many by comparison. We cannot allow people to come in from Syria and I would stop it, and I would stop it immediately. We have tens of thousands of people coming into this country. We don't know who they are. There's no paperwork. There's no documentation. Now, with that being said, build safe zones over in Syria, and I'll get the Gulf states to pay for it because our country has no money. We have to rebuild our infrastructure in this country. We have a disaster going on in our country. Our roads, our highways, our bridges, our tunnels, our airports, our hospitals, our everything, our schools. We have a disaster going on. So we're going to rebuild our country. We have to start. We've spent now almost $5 trillion in the Middle East. We right. can't do this anymore. We have to get back. Now, we have, to, we have to knock the hell out of ISIS, that I have to say. But we have to get back to rebuilding our country.